When people get a Tesla, one of the first things they do is take it to a nearby supercharger and charge up their car. It's like the ultimate ritual to the EV gods or something like that in hopes to have the healthiest car around. But it's totally normal as I even did that myself as I'm sure a lot of you watching will do the same thing. And one time when I was pulling up to a supercharger stall, I noticed the plug was actually on top of the stall. And I was thinking to myself, who the heck is so lazy to push the plug back in? Little did I know that tiny little minuscule gesture actually meant something. Keep watching. What's poppin' with Gucci guys? If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. The intention of today's video is to provide the simplest yet detailed video about supercharging because if you are a Tesla owner or if you plan on being one very soon, you know that supercharging is eventually going to be a part of your life sooner or later. And the reason for that is because these chargers are placed conveniently in places like shopping malls or hotels and in those situations where you forget to charge your car for whatever reason or you just need to charge your car last minute, these chargers are going to be your best friends. So in today's video, I'm going to have a couple of topics I want to go over with you guys, but if I end up forgetting anything about supercharging, please, please, please do everyone a favor and just drop a comment down below so that we are all well informed about supercharging. Anyways, the topics I want to cover today is how to supercharge and the different types of superchargers there are, the best ways to use the supercharger, general supercharging facts, and lastly, supercharging etiquettes, which may sometimes be the most important. So make sure you guys watch this video all the way through. All right, so how do you supercharge a Tesla? What is this supercharging thing for your car? Don't worry, it's not rocket science or anything like that. It's actually quite easy. In fact, it's even easier than pulling up to a gas station and pumping in gas. To supercharge your Tesla, all you really have to do is reverse park your car into one of the spots where a supercharger is located and make sure you get as near as possible because sometimes the cables won't be long enough to reach your charge port. After you do that, just get out of your car, unplug the supercharger from the stall and plug it into your car. Yeah, it's that easy and you don't even have to pull out your credit card or anything like that like you have to do at a gas station because most likely your card information is already stored on the Tesla app. And once your car is fully charged to whatever limit you set it to, just unplug the charger from the car, plug it back into the stall and drive away. It's as simple as that. So after you charge at a couple of supercharging locations, you might have noticed that some superchargers may charge faster than others. And while you think you may be going crazy, I can assure you that you're not. There are actually three different superchargers available at the moment. There's the original V1s, the V2s, and the newest of the bunch is the V3s. The V1 and V2s charge up to 150 kilowatts of power distributed between two cars. And this basically means that if there are two cars plugged into the same circuit, then that power is shared. And this is actually something I'm gonna talk about later on in today's video. But moving forward, the V3 superchargers are again the newest of the bunch and while supercharging was decently quick already, this one changed the game even further with 250 kilowatts of peak charging power. And the best part is, the 250 kilowatts is dedicated to each charging station, meaning the power is not shared anymore. As great as it may seem, your car might not have the capability to charge with the entire 250 kilowatts. For example, my Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus can only utilize about 170 kilowatts out of the 250 because that's just what my battery can handle. But regardless of that, the V3 superchargers are still a major improvement and will charge my car faster than if I was at a V2 supercharger. Prior to the recent years, there were so many different Teslas being made at the time. So to find out your specific charging peak, just type into Google Tesla model, whatever charging peak, and you'll find out the specific numbers for your car. Next one I want to cover are the best ways to use a supercharger because while you can always use one, you may not be using them appropriately. It's all situational. For example, say that you're returning home from work and you have about 100 miles of range left in your car, but your house is only 50 miles away. The best place to charge in this situation would most likely be at your house unless you like hanging out at the superchargers. And to take it one step further, if you don't have free supercharging, it could cost you more to supercharge your car there than if you were to charge from home. So you always want to think about the situation that you're in. Another example is whenever you go on a long road trip, I would always recommend to either use a route planner or Tesla's trip feature. This way you can plan out the most efficient charging schedule, otherwise you might find yourself stopping by every single supercharger along the way and extending your trip by a couple of hours. Basically the way supercharging works is the less charge you have, the faster it will charge up. Think about it like filling up a glass of water from a pitcher. Initially you'll just pour that water in carelessly because the glass is empty. But as the water starts to top off, you'll start to slow down to prevent spilling. This is essentially the same way with supercharging, so in less words, you want to charge as least as possible to be as time efficient as possible. Make sense? Okay, so now I want to talk about a couple of general facts about supercharging and go over some of the most common questions regarding it. The first question I want to answer is, Jay, is supercharging a car frequently bad? 
And the answer to that is no, it's not bad. In fact, I supercharge my car at least once a week because frankly, it's free for me and I don't like being able to just sit there and jam out to some music. The reason why people are worried whether or not it is bad for the car is because as we all know by now, superchargers dump a ton of energy into the car at once. So people are concerned it will overload the battery and cause degradation over time. But think about it this way. Why would Tesla continue to create these faster superchargers if it'll just harm the battery? If anything, you most likely won't notice any signs of degradation for a very, very long time. And by then, Tesla will have come out with a whole bunch of new updates to improve the car. So rest assured and charge as much as needed. Another common question regarding supercharging is how much does it cost? Well, to answer that, it's basically free if you have free supercharging miles on your account. So if you haven't ordered your Tesla yet, make sure to smash the like button and then go ahead and use my referral link in the description. That way, once you take delivery, you can get a thousand free supercharging miles with your purchase. And then once you're officially a Tesla owner, you can also refer people to, and if they order and take delivery with your referral code, then the both of you will get a thousand free supercharging miles. It's a win-win situation. But if you don't have free supercharging miles, the price to use a supercharger may vary by location and prices may change from time to time. Moreover, some superchargers offer on-peak and off-peak rates. So to get the best pricing information, just take a look at your vehicle's touchscreen, touch on one of the supercharging icons, and it should tell you the average pricing per kilowatt hour. Overall, I would say these two questions are the most common questions regarding supercharging, but if you have any more questions concerning this, feel free to drop me a comment down below. Ah uh, yes, we have finally landed to the last topic I'm going to talk about in this video, the supercharging etiquettes. Sorry to sidetrack here, but the word etiquette kind of reminds me of Jim Halpert from The Office for some reason. You know that episode where he wears a tux to work because it's classy? I don't know. Is it classy enough? But anyways, yes, there are some specific etiquettes regarding supercharging. And the first one I want to talk about is what to do when a supercharger is down. This is something that just happened to me recently and I didn't think it was that common. But in my previous vlog, I went to go charge my car at Santana Row. And when I pulled up to the stall, everything looked normal. But once I plugged the charger in, my car was not taking any charge at all. And this was because the supercharger was down. So if somebody pulled up to the same stall before me and figured that the supercharger was down, but decided to just plug the charger back in anyways, that's a huge no-no. The proper etiquette in this situation is to either leave the plug on top of the charger or you can leave it on the ground somewhere safe that nobody can run over it. This way it can be a sign that the charger is broken for the next person who wants to charge their car. Another etiquette to be wary about is waiting in line at superchargers. I personally haven't ran into this situation yet, but I've heard so many stories where people are cutting each other in line to go charge their cars. So when this happens, just keep in mind that it goes by a chronological order. Basically, the first person who is waiting for the next stall gets the next stall, regardless of if they're directly in front of it or if they're far away they're still getting that stall. And after you're done charging, the next etiquette is to just move your car because unless the supercharging lot is completely empty, someone might be waiting for you to move your car so that they can charge the car as well. And in some instances where you're done charging but you leave your car plugged in, you could be hit by some idle fees. So to prevent this, charge up to whatever you need and then move your car. All right, so the last etiquette I wanna cover is pulling into a supercharger. When you're pulling into a supercharger, don't be that person and park directly next to somebody if there are a ton of open spots. I'm sure they're gonna give you a mean look and 100% I would too. Again, unless it's a V3 supercharger, the older superchargers share the same power. So for example, if somebody is charging their car at 1A and you pull into 1B, you're literally stealing their charge rate. So it makes 100% sense for them to be angry at you. Plus you're not doing yourself any favors. So just pull into every other supercharging stall unless it's absolutely needed for you to be parked next to them. Supercharging is a powerful tool that all Tesla owners can take advantage of, but with great power comes with great responsibility. So I hope today's video was helpful in terms of educating you guys a bit more more on the topics that we discussed. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe down below. And just another quick shout out to you guys because we are sitting at around 900 subscribers. My original goal before the end of this year was to hit a thousand subscribers, but you guys are making it possible for me to hit that number even sooner. So I wanna thank each and every one of you guys for helping me and supporting me throughout this journey. It really means a lot whenever you guys are commenting on my videos and liking my videos. That tells me you guys are enjoying the content that I produce. And as a content creator and a friend, I promise to do my best and continue making quality content for you guys but as always you guys thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you next time peace